In this quick lecture, we're going to talk about how caves form um, in places with carbonate bedrock. Um, so what we're going to start out, these are going to form in places where we have carbonate bedrock. So let's imagine we have a big mass of limestone. So we have our lovely limestone. So crystalline limestone, fossiliferous limestone, something like that. Okay, so it's, it's thick, it's a big mass of, um, of rock, and above it we have a layer. This pen is just not happy today. So we're going to have a layer of soil on the top. And then this is our limestone bedrock. Okay. Um, now at the surface, what starts to happen, so we'll maybe have trees and things kind of reminding us that we're at the top. Um, now when it rains, I think I'm going to need some new pens. Okay, so it starts to rain. Up here, we have our water from our rain. It moves, infiltrates into the soil. Uh, soil contains carbon dioxide. So the water and the carbon dioxide join together to form um, carbonic acid, so H2CO3. This is a weak acid, but it is strong enough that when it starts to move through the limestone bedrock, is, and the bedrock's made out of calcium carbonate, CaCO3, when that carbonic acid joins with the calcium carbonate, okay, um, what we start to see forming is that it breaks it down into bicarbonate, so HCO3 minus one, and calcium, which is a plus two charge, so these are ions. So basically, as this rain and this weak acid moves through here and it joins the water table, we're going to draw our water table, let's say it's up here. I'm gonna write WT for water table. What this acid starts to do is it starts to dissolve away the rocks and it tends to flow along planes, cracks, um, breaks and joints within the rock. Any little fractures that it has, it'll kind of seep in through there and it starts to dissolve away the rock. So we're, we end up seeing this big cavity that forms um, inside the bedrock. Now I said before this is happening, it's below the water table. So at this point where the cave is forming, this is all filled with water. Okay. And because it's filled with water, it has pressure on it. So the land above it is still stable. Now over time, we know that water tables fluctuate and sometimes they go down. So we might have had the water get lowered for various reasons. Land can be uplifted, water can be drawn out by many kinds of reasons. Uh, we might have less precipitation, so we have that water table lowers. When the water table is below our cave system, let's see if I can erase it to avoid confusion. The cavity empties of water because again, the water is going to seep down through the rocks until it joins the water table. Okay, so we have this nice big opening. Now when this water moves through the rock, it's still dissolving the rocks above it. So it still has these bicarbonate and calcium ions in solution. When it hits the edge of this cavern, this now is filled with air. And now that little drop comes out, 
some of it starts to evaporate. So the carbon dioxide, some of it will start to evaporate out. And a little tiny bit of the calcium will combine with the carbonate and it's going to lead to the precipitation of a little tiny bit of limestone. Um, in this case, the new calcium carbonate that's being precipitated is going to be our travertine. So travertine is just limestone that's being deposited by this re-precipitation um, to create these nice cave deposits. Um, over time, we're going to see this forming, we'll just say like dot by dot. So as that drop drips, it's going to be, leave a little tiny bit of calcium carbonate at the top, and then the drop is gonna fall through the air and it's gonna splash on the cave floor and leave a little tiny bit of calcium carbonate there as well. Over time, these features will start to develop into our cave deposits. When they hang down from the ceiling, these are our stalactites. Okay, they hold tightly to the ceiling, so those are our stalactites. Uh, the ones that form and grow up from the bottom, those are our stalagmites. As I tell my kids, they're mighty strong. They're kind of fighting the force of gravity and building upwards out of the floor. Over time with enough precipitation, and this is like drop by drop, you know, it takes hundreds and thousands of years for these to form, but over time they can grow together and create columns um, as well. And then water will start to flow along the sides and kind of, it'll even kind of flow down into the bottom so you can get flowstone. But again, stalactites, stalagmites, columns, flowstone, it's all travertine deposits. There are specific little stalactites that are very thin where it's in a hollow tube. Uh, they're called soda straws. Um, often we get in and they create beautiful features and we'll, people will spend a long time observing them and calling them different things. Um, but this is how caves form. So they form below the water table when it and it forms because of the dissolution of the limestone bedrock. Um, and then the cool features inside of our caves form after the water table has been lowered um, and it creates those deposits because we have some evaporation and then re-precipitation of those calcium and bicarbonate uh, ions. So that's that.